Um, there's several people who I know on social media and friends of me and you fall in different camps and some some more lean towards the continuous uh, uh, thinking that the Lord still speaks. Some may lean into that camp of cessationism where the Lord doesn't speak. That's that's the thought. And no matter where you add on that, I, I really feel like the Lord is sharing something that it is time that we really need to pray for our nation and our country and I know a lot of you do that, but I feel like there's this new sense of urgency that uh, we become complacent and become content. And as I read in Ezekiel 16, it talks about that this was one of the iniquities, like these are one of the sins of Sodom right here, is that her and her daughters, they had pride, they had fullness of food. So they, you know, they had a lot of things and they had abundance of idleness. I think a lot of times our complacency is leading to some idleness and, um, Anyway, just feel like this is a word from the Lord. It is in season and just want to put it out there for you guys to see. And so actually, I wrote this on June the 16th, uh, 2024. And so this is a few days ago. And leading up to this, I had been feeling the stirring within my heart. And um, and I felt like the Lord said, grab your instrument. And my instrument is my pen. And so I started writing this down. This is on June the 16th, 2024. And I titled it Independence rebellion, right? So on July 4th, 1776, 56 delegates, they signed their name to a document making a declaration to the world that their 13 colonies were now an independent, sovereign states. They declared their freedom from the rule of any other government and a nation to be governed by themselves. This was seen as rebellion and treason by the then governing nation of Britain and war soon broke out. See, these 13 colonies fought for their independence and they fought for their freedom and they earned exactly what they had set their heart out to do. They became their own self-governing and independent nation. The seeds planted by those 13 colonies, they blossomed into a nation compromised of 50 United States, a world power, an authority on the planet. When major disasters strike around the globe, these 50 states respond to the call to help and to serve. These 50 states, they are defenders of freedom around the globe. They are feared, they are loved, and they are also hated. But this is what I feel like the Lord is, is really sharing to us. The same spirit of this nation, it's a draw and a magnet to many. They flocked to the hope and the freedom offered by this great nation, yet... The very thing that has made this nation great and is making this nation great is also what is causing the heart to be sick. Rebellion and stubbornness. See, the desire for independence in the natural has bled over to independence, stubbornness, and rebellion at the heart level. The heart is sick. And if the heart remains sick, the body is soon to follow. If the heart should perish, then the body will perish. In Daniel 5, the king of Babylon was hosting a party and he started seeing this hand writing on the wall. And the, the handwriting said, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Upharsen. I think that's how you say it. Anyway, meaning God has numbered your kingdom. You have been weighed in the balances and you have been found wanting. Your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. And y'all, that's exactly what happened. Uh, that very night on the night of October 11th, 539 BC, Cyrus and his troops conquered Babylon. And according to Xenophon of uh, Athens, Cyrus launched a nighttime attack. And it is said that he told his troops, tonight we go against them. When some are asleep, some are drunk and all are unprepared. Thus was the fall of Babylon the Great. This is why I feel like the Lord is saying, as United States, you have been placed on the scales and you have been found wanting as well. The heart is sick, but it is not too late for your healing. Your rebellion is the sin of witchcraft and your stubbornness is as the sin of idolatry. You have committed lewdness and adultery against the Lord whose hand has made you great. The balances have been taken out of the storage. You, O oh United States, have now been placed upon them. The Lord desires to heal the sick heart, but we must humble ourselves and repent from the rebellion and the stubbornness of heart. 
And, and, and as I was reading, the, as I was just writing what I felt like the Lord was saying, I felt this ringing in my ear, this call in my ear, this, this ringing in my ears. But, but how? But how was kind of the question that I could hear ringing in my ear. How do we? And I can hear the call of a heart, of a, a faint whisper of desire with no knowledge of how and where to even turn. And y'all, that's because the people are perishing for lack of knowledge of the Holy One. There is plenty of information. In fact, this is the most informed generation to date. Content is available. Information is available as well. But what is lacking is knowledge. The very shepherds, they are supposed to deliver this knowledge. They actually lack the knowledge for themselves. Therefore, the Lord is raising up men and women in this hour who know him and are known by him. And he is preparing them to send them out to the highways and byways to make him truly known. If people perish for the lack of knowledge of him, then healing comes by the knowledge of him at the heart level. These men and women have been preparing in the incubator of the secret place. The secret place is such a wonderful place, but these men and women are getting to know him and are learning how to go in and to go out so they can teach others how to go in and how to go out. These men and women are being sent out. The U.S. has been placed on the balances. Will you listen? Will you listen is a question. And uh, I felt like that was something the Lord was saying. And then actually, I woke up this morning at 3 a.m. So this is 624. So what was that? A few days later? I don't know. How many other days later? Let's say the 16th. Yeah, so 16th, today is the, the 24th, so maybe eight days later. And I heard the Lord um, say this, or actually, I actually caught a vision. This was at 3 a.m. this morning. In this vision, I saw what appeared to be a courtroom, and God as the judge was presiding. He was massive, and the one on trial that I saw was actually this really small plaque, and the plaque read, America. And I interpreted the massive size difference to be the bigness of the Lord, just the grandness and the greatness and the largeness of the Lord and the littleness of America. And I heard the Lord say, you, America, have become too big for your britches. <laughs> about that Southern uh, uh, idiom right there? Your power, your fame, and your successes have made you prideful and arrogant. It's one thing to be proud about what's happened and a completely other thing to be prideful. To be proud of something is rooted in gratitude. Pride is rooted in self-reliance. Your fame, your power, and your success has caused you to become self-reliant, fat, slothful, and careless. You think you can rely on previous successes and your reputation to relinquish your foes and to keep terror at bay, but you do not know the alliances that are being formed. It is I, the Lord, that provides and protects. It is I, the Lord, that formed this nation. My hand and my heart has been in and over this land. I desire to remain, but do you? You were on trial. You were put on notice. You are awaiting a verdict. And, um, you know, just as I as I read those two things and I just feel this call to a time of prayer. And, and, and one of the things that I, I feel like we're being called to prayer for is leaders to rise up who truly know him. And so I, I, as I. As I thought about this, I just wrote out a prayer, and I'm going to read this read this prayer. And um, and again, wherever you land at on some of that stuff, but I, I feel like this is a time that we need to intentionally intercede for our nation and with a sense of urgency. You cannot make a difference if there is indifference in your heart and apathy in your heart. You just can't do it. And so here's the prayer that I wrote out this morning. Lord, this is a land of freedom and opportunity. It is a place that offers hope for the hopeless and the refugees. It is a land where we declare with our mouth that we are one nation under you. May that declaration be one from the heart of this land and not just its mouth. Lord, we ask you for your forgiveness of our pride and our arrogance of a heart. We repent of our self-reliance and ask you to help us to see you rightly. Lord, not only do we need you, we desire you. Not only do we desire you, but we request you to move and pour out your spirit upon this land. May the knowledge of you abound. And I ask 
in your name, that you would raise up and release out leaders in every sector of society who truly know you to make you known. May these leaders be leaders with clean hands and pure hearts who stand on truth and justice and who are unwilling to accept bribes or enter into the back rooms. Father, I ask that you close the mouths of leaders who proclaim to know you but who do not. Remove them from their places of influence if they are unwilling to enter in and to get to know you and replace them with a leader who does know you. We ask, Father, that your glory would fill this land and heal this land. May the verdict read, my nation loved and chosen, a place my spirit is welcome in the name of Jesus. And so, hey, just felt led to share that. I do not like doing lives like this. I don't even, honestly, um, yeah, I just don't like doing lives, but I feel like this was the route that I was supposed to go. And so just trying to be obedient to that, I hope this is encouraged you. And twofold that I hear from that is it's time to pray. Time to pray with intentionality. And if you are a leader, if you are a pastor or a shepherd of a flock, it is time to come into the secret place that the Lord has a message for your congregation. The lack of knowledge is, is calling people to perish. It's time to quit going to SermonCentral.com. It's time to quit paying people to provide sermons for you and to get in to hear what he's got to say for you so you can make his, his ways known to your people and they can go out and do the things that they are called to do. And so, hey, I bless you. I, I appreciate you guys. Hope you have an awesome day and God bless.